Hello, welcome to Government Connection. My name is Vicki Evans. There is an enormous pet overpopulation problem in the United States. In fact, the Humane Society of the United States estimates that six to eight million cats and dogs entered shelters in the past year or every year. In Pima County, last year, over 21,000 animals were taken in or handled by the Pima uh, County Animal Care Center. And who is the cause? What is the cause of this problem? Well, it's you and it's me. And we're going to learn more about uh, responsible pet ownership and just the scope of, of what Pima Animal Care Center does as we welcome Jenny Kading. Jenny, thank you for being here. And if you'll notice, <laughs> Jenny is also joined by Murphy. And Murphy is about, we'll learn more about Murphy <laughs> as the show goes on. But Jenny is the volunteer coordinator and outreach coordinator for Pima Animal Care Center. Thanks for being here, thank Jenny. You. And then we also welcome Richard Page. And Richard is the uh, volunteer coordinator and kind of liaison with PAC or Pima Animal Care Center with ARF. And ARF stands for Animal Rescue Foundation. So Correct. Richard, thank you so much for and being thank here. Thank you for having me. So talk about Pima County PAC is, oh, and I forgot, I forgot the most, your friend, forgive me. Yeah. And Richard has. Yeah. Speckles. Uh, speckles. And um, Speckles is actually at PAC, Pima yeah. Animal Care Center. And oh, look at all pet Speckles, you don't know how pretty you are. <laughs> but this leads me to PAC is a, a really a government agency, part of the Pima County government right we're part of the health department so what is it part of the health department what is it that that you are charged with we um, protect the health and safety of people and pets in Pima County and we do that by enforcing the animal ordinances and the laws dealing with animals um, taking in stray and unwanted animals and, and numerous other things and you have to take them in don't we you? we do well we do yes yeah uh, yeah um, let's talk about what are some of the goals of PAC. You uh, know, I mean, you, you, you take, you know, you're, you're <coughs> taking in the animals. Right. Our, our goals are to, to help reduce the, the pet overpopulation in Pima County and to find homes for the animals we're caring for and to help educate people on how to be responsible and take care of their animals. Right. So ARF, Richard, uh, what is the involvement? How did ARF uh, well, ARF work kind of uh, was formed and started uh, as a re animal rescue organization, and also uh, <laughs> to k try to try to get more of the animals directly out of PAC uh, through adoption. And so ARF keeps uh, PAC open on weekends, primarily uh, Saturday afternoons and all the and on Sundays. Uh, the only people there doing the adoption work is ARF people. All right. Uh, and recently, uh, we've started doing it also during the week because their, their workers need help. They, they, they've got a lot to do, and so I've s recently started trying to staff during the week to get more animals out. Right, right. What about, <coughs> let's talk about pet adoptions. Kind of, what are some of the, the criteria? Well, when you come in, you want to make sure you've thought it through. Once you're there, there the criteria is pretty easy if, as long as you agree to take care of your animal and make sure it's seen by a vet and, and you do the right thing by it, you, you can adopt from us. Um, so our, our criteria is much less stringent than some of the rescue groups such as ARF and, and other groups in town. When, um, when, it, when, uh, when you get an animal from PAC, does that animal come, it's been examined by your vet? has some inoculations, or how, how does that part right. work? Right, when, when you adopt from us, it will have its first set of booster shots. Most of them are probably gonna need at least one or two more of those after you adopt from us. Every animal will be altered before it goes home. Um, it's microchipped. If it's old enough for a license, it will have a license and a rabies shot as well. Okay, and let's talk about, you said altered, which is spay and neuter. Right. Um, the importance of that. Very important. Uh, <clears throat> key to starting to drop the, the problem in the county <clears throat> and it's actually county rule that uh, every animal that goes out of pack or for that matter out of uh, uh, Humane Society are all spayed and neutered before they leave. Uh, the only exceptions to that are animals that go out through rescue which are animals that are 
could be ill, you know, like with kennel cough or something like mm -hmm. that. Well, they can't go in for the surgery then, so uh, they go out, but the people that do the rescues guarantee to bring it back okay. and, and get the spay or neuter. Right. I think we have some uh, information that we can share with you about uh, spay and neuter. And this is um, Friday, February 15th uh, at the Humane Society, and it's a free spay and neuter surgery for your pet. Right. Um, it's, it's thanks to Pima County. Pima County has given AWASA, which stands for Animal, Res <laughs> Animal Welfare Alliance of Southern Arizona, which is a, a group of many, many rescue groups in town, including Humane Society and PAC and, and ARF and uh, lots of other people who come together and are, they're trying to help address the pet overpopulation problem here. So they're offering free spay and neuters and very cheap vaccinations, right. right, and reduced microchips. And it's first come, first serve, so you want to make sure all that information is posted on our website. So, What are the excuses that you hear people talk about, about why they don't have this done? Because I think this is something we all need to take to heart. You know, if, you're, uh, if you want somebody as cute as Murphy coming and living and being a part of your family, you know, what you have to remember that A, Murphy's going to grow up, and Murphy needs to be neutered. Right. But what are some of the things that people say? Some of the excuses? A lot of people don't understand uh, what it really means. They think it's going to hurt their animal. Uh, they think it's going to, you know, terribly change its personality. And in reality, it's just the opposite. Uh, it makes their health <coughs> or over their long life much better. And <coughs> uh, it does calm them down a little. <laughs> <laughs> it got a little dry. Needs a little well, drink of water. He's here. talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but people, you know, they they just uh, they either just don't want it done. Uh, we've had people just walk out when they're told that it has to be done before the you know the animals leave. Right. And, you, and my answer to them is look around you. You know, at any given time, there's got to be four or five hundred animals there at the shelter. It's wow. huge. It's oh. just huge. Wow. Oftentimes, too, people think they want to show the miracle of birth to their children. <laughs> and there are lots of other ways you can do that. There's great shows on TV, and, and you, you don't have to show them. There, there are better ways of going about right, it. Right, yeah. right, because then you've got anywhere from two to one to ten and, kittens or puppies. And they don't realize how expensive for. it can be, too, yeah. to, to get those animals big enough to find them homes. It's, it's not a cheap proposition. So. Right. And um, if I can, dogs, dogs can breed what every six twice months, a year, twice, twice a, year. a year. Cats three times a year yep. typically. And so uh, it's something. Lots of lots of litters. Lots of litters, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about things to consider when adopting a pet, but let's let's go into depth about that. Uh, we'll start with you, Richard. Um, you know, things that you think <coughs> people really need to consider. Well. Uh, First and foremost is can they can they afford it? Uh, we have you know there are people that come in when their animal gets loose and they're trying to redeem their animal, and they can't afford even that. They can't afford to get health care for them. So we're talking annual shots. I don't know. It's hundred a hundred by I don't know. No. You know, it, it, to, I've got two dogs. It probably doesn't cost me fifty dollars a year for the health care. Wow. Between and that includes the office visit and the shots. <coughs> for each of them. And then food? Food uh, depends really on what's <coughs> how big a dog you have. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys here probably maybe $10 a month, $15 a month, something like that. I probably spend about that with both of mine. Of course, both of mine are about these these two sizes. I get a, a little and then I... Yeah, yeah. How, uh, so it has the speckles woken up there, awakened? <laughs> yeah, she kinda, she's kind of looking around a little. See what's going on. See what's going on. Well, they're both very, <coughs> very nice. So the other, the other thing is, what's the composition of your family? Uh, do you have little kids, or are you, is it an older couple? Uh, and that really, you know, weighs heavily on what breeds you get and, and what type of dog you get. Do you want a little lap dog? Although this one's probably going to get big. <laughs> Uh, <coughs> I've seen big dogs that think they're lap dogs. <laughs> exactly. <coughs> We've all lived with one yes. of those or yeah. two of those. So, 
it, you know, if you've got little kids, you don't want to have, uh, I, I recommend against it anyway. Some people don't think so, but I recommend against chihuahuas and, and small breeds because they tend to be nippy. And if you look around pack, there's almost always some small dog in there that has nipped some kid and then they get in there as being a biter and so they're quarantined. And it, you know, I'm not saying people shouldn't do that, you know, but they, they got to understand right. what, what animals are like. Right. Uh, and let's talk about the kind of attention a dog needs, especially Jenny, on a daily basis. You, you want to make sure that they're being exercised and you give them prop, I mean, make sure that you go through obedience and you spend time with them daily so that they stay, they keep, they know those obedience skills because if you don't work with them all the time, they're going to forget what you taught them. Um, you, you, they're, they're, you're, they'll be your constant companion. So you, when you come home, they're going to want to see you and play with you and, and be with you. Because a dog, when a dog has a problem like digging or obsessive digging in the yard or barking, 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 barking or chewing the furniture, it's usually a, a person problem, isn't it? Yeah, it is in a lot, <coughs> a lot of cases because it's the owner doesn't know how to train the dog and every behavior has a reason. Uh, in my dogs, uh, you know, they dig, but they both dig, and I just let them dig. It's sort of natural for them, but I have a side yard that's just theirs, so I don't care. Right, right. You know, but chewing on things. Uh, <clears throat> when I grew up, uh, socks always got a knot tied in them when they belonged to the dogs. Well, not all dogs recognize that, <laughs> you know. So the best way is don't get them into doing those kinds of bad behaviors. And you don't ever want to discipline a dog by hitting it. <clears throat> it doesn't work. They don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Jenny, you can share mine if you'd like. <laughs> But it, don't hit, that's not a way no, to discipline. No, they, they, the dogs do only take that as being, you're really upset with them and they don't learn anything from it other than to try and stay away from you. Uh, <coughs> positive reinforcement always works better. And in ARF, we actually have <coughs> two volunteers that are dog trainers that <coughs> uh, try to help us out with animal you know, behavior problems, even when they're down at pack because uh, some of the dogs are extremely shy, therefore they don't present themselves mm -hmm. very well. Uh, so, <clears throat> I, you know, I, the, there's another guy that comes in and he tries to get the animals to be more open and feel better about it. They're stressed beyond belief down there anyway. What do you say, what is your <coughs> concern when uh, someone wants to adopt one of the animals? about whether the dog lives outside all the time? Is there, how, are you, how do you handle that dilemma? Uh, <coughs> well, when you say lives outside all the time, they have to have shelter. You can't, it's against the law to do t what's called a tie out. Uh, and there, you know, it, you can imagine it here in Arizona in the middle of the summer, tying a dog to a stake with no, sh no sh shade, no water, no food. Uh, and obviously it's against the law. You can have dogs outside all the time, but they have to be able to get the food, they have to be able to get the water, and a lot of people do. Uh, mine are probably outside, I'd say, 70 to 80 percent of the time, uh, especially when I'm not there. Mm -hmm. But they've got a side yard, they've got a, a, a way to get into uh, their dog house to get out of the weather. They always have water, you know, so you got to take care of them. Right, right. And when someone adopts from the pack, do you just ask these questions? I mean, it's... We have a, a guide that they read and initial when they're adopting. Okay, all right. And after we talked about adopting, what about, um, you know, volunteering opportunities? Uh, you said you had five, oh, there were there 500 animals? It can be up to 500 at... Right, right. There's not that many available for adoption. Right. You know, they're there for lots of reasons. Yeah. Um, and we depend so much on the volunteers who help us. Um, the pack volunteers do anything from helping with on-site and off-site adoptions to walking the dogs and socializing with them and working with the obedience and, and playing with the cats and the kittens that are in the cat room. 
Um, they help the kennel staff clean kennels if, if they want and, and feed the animals. Almost anything they, they can be trained to do. So there's lots of different staff things things to Oh yeah, do. if they want to, if they, if it's too overwhelming in the kennels, there's office work there every month. 10,000 10, license renewal forms get mailed out. <laughs> so that, that's a job all in itself. And the, there's so many things and they're so helpful. If we didn't have volunteers, we would, we would be in really sorry right. shape. Yeah. And we have a caller tonight. Uh, Lisa, what, what's your question? Hi. Um, that little black puppy just I looks <laughs> absolutely <laughs> adorable to me. <laughs> um, and reminds me of someone I once knew whom I loved. Here's my question. If, if um, we already have a dog, is there some way that would be good about finding out if they're compatible to some little dear heart good like question. this that we might yeah. be interested in adopting? And also, uh, do you know about cats with the dogs as well? Thank you. Yeah. Because our, our, most of our animals are stray, we don't have a lot of information as to whether they might get along with cats. Usually we can tell if, if the dogs in our kennels get along with other dogs because they're in with lots of other dogs. We have three outside dog runs that if you have a pet, we recommend you bring a, somebody with you if you're not coming alone with them and um, you can come get the animal you're interested in and bring them out to the outside run and they can meet your pet and see how they do and how they get along. And sometimes that's nice too because it's a neutral territory. So they're, they're not as apt to be territorial as if you brought them home right away. There's, and there's a whole procedure associated with doing that. What, to make introducing them to you? Yeah, to make sure that uh, if they're really not gonna get along, you don't get into a big fight and, uh, you know, and they can get nasty, so, you know. <laughs> Dog's going under me. Right. It, yeah, <clears throat> they're on leashes. Uh, with cats, by the way, uh, you may not know we do this, but <laughs> <coughs> we do. We, You're hearing you know, it for the first time. No, we do take cats. There, you know, there's a cat room there at PAC that has always has a fair number of cats in there, and if somebody's worried about how the dogs will react to cats, we'll keep it on a leash and take it down there, and just walk it up to a cage and, and see if if the you know if the dog reacts violently or just stands there most of the time the dog will just stand there and I've watched cats go whack I, on the nose and they just say why are you doing that to me right <laughs> you know in our house it's always been the cats that set the, the mm -hmm. boundaries and the That's rules what no matter what the, who the dog was <coughs> or yeah. how old or what sex or gender and sometimes it just takes a lot of work when you bring them home if there's a few issues if, if you're patient with them and don't push them too quickly and give them each time in separate rooms, you, they, they seem to work out a lot of those things over time. Right. Well, that's a very key point you bring up because we get animals back uh, from adoptions because people say, well, it didn't fit in our house. Well, they're doing it after about three days. And it's kind of like, how can you figure that out in three days? Uh, and we try to explain to them, you know, how to introduce an animal to their home, <coughs> not just the, the human type, but right. the rest. Because you can't just throw them in. Uh, especially when you bring home an animal from pack, it's just been spayed or neutered. So they, you know, first off, they're not supposed to be out jumping around and running around. Uh, so you got a plenty of opportunity, but you want to do it over a period of weeks, not days. Yeah. I <coughs> just experience, what it, you know, that's the way it works at our house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the public doesn't always know that. Right. And that's where it's so important. Uh, we really need to educate ourselves. I think the majority of us are animal lovers and, and would love to ha have pets, but we really need to take a good look at ourselves and educate ourselves and mm -hmm. pack. And people like Richard with ARF are the ones that will help us do that. And uh, I want to mention just next week, uh, we'll be doing uh, an about face. We won't have cute animals on, <laughs> unfortunately, but we will be talking to representatives from Tucson Unified School District and the many issues that um, the district is facing this year. So you won't want to miss uh, TUSD and the issues next week. I wanted to ask you about geriatric adoptions. How is that kind of a special clientele that is sometimes difficult to face uh. or place is what I meant to say? No, 
You mean older animals? Yeah. Older animals are almost impossible to place. Are they? Typically, uh, typically the younger they are and the, the more the, the smaller breed dogs, the pure breed dogs and the puppies and kittens, they're the ones who are going to get adopted first. The mm -hmm. older and the bigger they are, the harder it is to find them a home. Okay. Um, and, and there we're really fortunate. We have some great volunteers and they have <coughs> been given permission to, to reduce price on some of the older dog and older cat adoptions so that maybe if they're not quite as expensive, people might look at them a little harder and think about them because they're great animals and often they're housebroken and, and they don't come with as many issues as what a puppy or a they young do dog might. Right. And, and yeah. so it's a really good choice for a lot of people. Right. Uh, does, um, now does ARP, do you uh, also, so you, you have volunteers then that also work with PAC, is that correct? With PAC? Yeah, or do you need volunteers for your organization is what I'm well, trying to say we're, here. Well, we're always looking for good volunteers. And uh, most of most of the, I'd say, at least half of our volunteers are doing adoptions at PAC, uh, both on the weekends and during the week. We do need, still need volunteers for doing foster care. This was going to be my question. Uh, <coughs> and because I'll give you an example. Every time a litter of very young puppies comes in the PAC, PAC has to find a, a rescue organization to take care of them. Right. If, if they didn't get out of there, they would probably get sick and die. Do, I put it so bluntly. Do you need to be uh, a person that's ho at home all day in order to foster? No. Amy over here is a foster. She's Amy, school. Amy, the, hi, <laughs> you can't see Amy. Amy is the dog wrangler today. Yeah. And Amy's in high school. No, Amy is now in college. Amy's now in college. Yeah. And, and fosters. Yep. Oh. And uh, they... There's there's a, a you know a fair uh, list of things that you agree to and you understand when you do foster mm -hmm. care work. Uh, but, but I imagine it's very rewarding. Yes, and yeah. we have you know, and sad when they have to go. Yeah, it yeah. can be very hard when <laughs> you have to we say have, goodbye. We have two volunteers that currently have I think ten. Oh wow! Uh, and six of them are their own. Four are fosters. Uh, they started out with one. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, of course, talking to Pima Animal Care Center and ARF, which is Animal Rescue Foundation. And here's some contact information <coughs> Pardon me for PAC. Pima Animal Care Center, and it is a uh, division of the Health Department. Telephone number 243-5900. That's 243-5900. And always the website. PimaAnimalCare.org. That's PimaAnimalCare.org. And then we'd like to show you the R for Animal Rescue Foundation information. Uh, phone number 319-9292. That's 319-9292. And the website is adoptafriend.petfinder.org. Thanks, guys. <laughs> adopt a friend, or yes, adopt a friend dot petfinder dot com. So once again, adopt a friend dot petfinder dot com. And uh, while we've got some time left, um, perhaps we can focus on speckles and tell us <laughs> a little. Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little about speckles and the background and <coughs> and why well. speckles kind of landed in the uh, at the. You know, I, I I have to say I haven't read the card through, but right. the typical dog that's there is a stray. Uh, this is a female. She's about one to two years old. Obviously, very calm. You know, for being that young, uh, she's kind of a shepherd uh, Aussie mix. Yeah. And uh, I noticed she's a little thin, so it probably wasn't yeah. real good wherever she was, or yeah. on the road, or running loose. No, you, you see a lot, all different ones coming in and you get them there for all different kinds of reasons. Right, right. And and, and Murphy who's fallen asleep <laughs> quickly? <laughs> Murphy is um, a stray that came off the street probably about eight weeks old, um, possibly a chow mix or a Newfie mix, it's hard to say. <laughs> and he's, he's going to be a big dog. He's going to be big, and he's going to need a lot of oh attention, grooming-wise. But he's very, <laughs> he's, very he's sweet. A, yeah, yeah, he's a love. So there are some events coming up, and we want to make sure that you check them out. So let's take a look at events that are coming up. 
And the first one is Metropolis, and this is off-site adoption, Saturday, uh, the 9th of February, from 11 to 3 p.m. And then Yappy Hour, I love, love these names, Yappy Hour at Metropolis, and that's Friday, the 15th of February, from 6 to 9 p.m. And then the Arizona Animal Fair is at Reed Park from 10 to 4 p.m. And that is Saturday, uh, February 16th. And that's uh, sponsored by another rescue organization, Saving Safe, Animals right. yeah. from Euthanasia. Right. And, and we are so fortunate, the Metropolis off-site adoptions that we do. Metropolis is the, the pet store up at Lawn Cantata Mall at Campbell and Skyline. And they have been so supportive of all the rescue groups in town. Um, we're up there once a month usually doing off-site adoptions. And uh, we like to bring animals that sometimes are a little shyer in the, in, the, in the kennels and don't show as well in the kennels because they're so overwhelmed and they can get out. And they get and, to and shine and a little bit. Exactly, and, and get a lot of attention that day. And, and we have very, very nice success up there. Right. And the store is so wonderful to us. Good, I'm, that's good to hear. What about, what do you need? What about donations, Richard? Uh, <coughs> well, ARF is always in, in need of donations because that's what pays the medical bills when we rescue animals. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you need food? Do you need collars and uh, leashes and... Food, yeah, yeah. We, we do take donations, you know, in-kind type donations. Food is good because that just gets turned right around and goes out to all the fosters, uh, lit, cat litter, things like that. Uh, but I, I, I'd have to say that the biggest need is being able to pay the vet bills. Okay. Uh, and most of the animals now that get rescued, because, and I'll have to say this as a good thing about PAC, they're trying very hard not to have to euthanize animals. Right. Yeah, <coughs> so that means so holding the ones them. that uh, go out for rescue typically are sick. Uh, they have kennel cough oh and, and so on. So we're the ones that put them there, we, and, uh, but we can also rescue them. Pima Animal Care Center, Center and ARF, thank you both so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wake up time.